everybody. Welcome to another live with Broke Girls Art School. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm finishing up the project that I actually finished up on a live video last night. If you want to check that out, I did post it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be showing you guys how I seal this and um, attach the hanging mechanism on the back. So let me get this camera all flipped around so you guys can see what I'm doing. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see some future content from me. Alrighty. Get this all set up in my ring lamp. Alright, cool guys. So you can see these are all the different supplies I'm going to be using. Um, I like using this little like craft hammer. It's just, you know, really tiny and you can actually screw off the bottom and it has like, you know, flathead screwdriver there. You can screw it off again. And there's, you know, so many fun surprises. <laughs> so we'll put this back together. And then to hang the wood burns, I don't get anything too crazy heavy duty because these are pretty lightweight. Um, I just get these basic hangers that come with a couple nails. You can get these anywhere. I usually get mine from Hobby Lobby. I just buy a bunch of them because I do quite a bit of portraits. Um, they do have more heavy duty versions of these. If you're going to be hanging something that's, you know, more heavy. Um, here I have my Mod Podge. This is always what I use to seal up my portraits. Even if I'm also going to do epoxy, I do a layer of Mod Podge down first. And then you're going to want a paintbrush. I like a bit of a wider wider tip because then I can spread it around easier and I would also recommend grabbing uh, just a paper towel and a toothpick in case you have any loose debris get into the Mod Podge while it's wet. Um, I'm not going to be epoxying this project just doing the Mod Podge um, but yeah let's get started. So when I'm going to be adding the hanger on the back I always like line up the portrait so it's facing like perfectly vertically in front of me and then Pick it up and flip it. And then you're just going to want to put the hanger down nice and centered. I do it like maybe a half inch from the top. I don't like when they're like super close up because I don't want the nail to be exposed while they hang it. So, and another little trick that I've discovered with this, let me plug in my Dremel tool, is I will take my Dremel tool and I'll drill in little holes to be starters for the nails so they're easier to keep straight. So I just take the Dremel tip, put it down with the holes that the nails will be going in. Blow away that sawdust. And then that way, if like this gets knocked off or something, you know where your center point was. You can line it back up again. So I'm gonna put my nails in like so. And then hammer these nails. Awesome. And then my little personal touch that I like to do when I make wood burns for people. I always do Handmade by Burn Blue on the back. I'm gonna do that real quick. I wanted to get like a stamp made, but I kind of like having something in my handwriting on there. Gotta love that homemade feel, right? So I just have my regular calligraphy tip on. Handmade by um, Yeah, if you guys haven't already, you should uh, check out my Instagram page. It's just burn blue art. And then my Instagram page for tattooing is at Sky Blues Tattoos. Blue is my middle name, by the way. <laughs> I 
All right, cool. So usually, yeah, I'll do that little seal at the bottom and then I'll take one of my business cards and I'll tape it to the back just with like some regular scotch tape. So people know how to find me if they want. So now we're gonna get to the Mod Podge process. Um, one thing I always recommend doing before you pour the Mod Podge down is taking whatever brush you're gonna be using and go off the edges and try to get off any like loose debris because if you like brush off the edge where the live edge is, then sometimes you'll bring little bits of wood back into the glue. Yeah, Mod Podge is essentially just a fancy glue. <laughs> That's why I really like it. It's not dangerous to breathe in. It's not dangerous to get on your skin like epoxy is. Cool, so now that we have this all brushed off, I'm gonna pour out my Mod Podge. Ooh, I haven't used this in a little bit. That's a tight cap. There we go. So whenever I get a new bottle of Mod Podge, Whenever I have a new bottle of Mod Podge, I always cut like a triangular little tip on the top sealant so that way it doesn't just like pour out. I have a little bit more control. So I'll usually pour out maybe like a silver dollar size. Uh, you don't want to do too much um, and you don't want to do too little. So just enough to where you can get a nice thin coat on the top. And you can always do multiple coats of this if you want it to be a little bit thicker. But you guys will notice the change and like these tones, especially back here where I used my torch to get that gradient, it's gonna darken it up really nice. And yeah, give it a little bit more contrast. Yeah, the one thing about Mod Podge you have to be careful with is since it is like water-based glue essentially, you don't wanna get it wet. Epoxy, you don't need to worry about that because that's almost like a layer of glass on top. But Mod Podge is just a, a nice sealant to protect the art, but you don't want to get it wet. So here I'm just brushing this out nice and smooth, making sure I have all areas covered. Might need a little bit more so I can get it out to this edge here. Yeah, it's really important if you guys want to epoxy your project to put Mod Podge down first. This is matte Mod Podge, by the way. I don't like the shiny stuff. I, I like when it's matte. But um, it's important to put this down before you epoxy because it will keep the, the epoxy from seeping through the wood. And when you epoxy um, raw wood, it usually darkens it a lot. So if you're doing a nice wood burn like this with a bunch of different layers of contrast and stuff, it will definitely take away a lot of your contrast since it's darkening the base layer. And contrast is very important. So I took a little bit of debris caught in here that I'm picking out with my toothpick. You wanna work pretty quick with it because once it starts to dry, if you go over it with your paintbrush, it'll kind of clump All right, cool, so this should dry pretty quick. I'll leave this video on for a little bit so you can watch the process. You can already see how this is drying a little bit darker over here on the sides, which looks really nice. I'm gonna grab a hair dryer real quick so that way I can speed up the drying process for you guys to see. Alrighty, sorry about that. I've got my hair dryer. Plug this one real quick. I'm not gonna uh, 
I'm going to use the, the cold setting on my hair dryer. Yeah, it's crazy how much more of this darkened up around the edges here. Like I said, I still might do a second coat on this to make it a little bit thicker because it does soak into the wood a little bit, but I'll dry it for just another 20 seconds or so. All right, so it's not totally tr dry yet, but you guys get the idea. Um, you can see why I love this stuff, right? It just gives it that little bit of extra pop, makes your art a little bit more crisp. Um, you can also use Mod Podge. I've used it on top of like uh, watercolor or if I do acrylic paintings on wood, uh, works great. I've never had it like ruin any of my projects. And um, yeah, highly recommend this stuff. And again, I like the matte version the best. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, on how I finish up my projects. Uh, please just drop a comment, let me know. But yeah, have a good day, you guys.